Hey there guys, welcome back for another Mortal Realms Monday painting video. So this week, looking at painting the Knight of Shrouds uh, from issue 56 of the Mortal Realms magazine. Now obviously I mentioned in the, uh, the reviews that I threw up today with this that uh, I have run a little bit behind due to some uh, technical problems with uh, hard drive and lost data and stuff. But uh, hopefully we'll be back to normal uh, from next week onwards. But uh, to start off with this guy, I've taken some uh, Nighthaunt Gloom and mixed this um, four parts Nighthaunt Gloom with uh, eight parts Lumian Medium um, so that this would give uh, quite a thin down um, Nighthaunt Gloom. And all I'm going to do is apply this over all of the ghostly areas and then let it dry and then apply a second, third, fourth and you know many more coats afterwards um, working my way up the body each time. Um, so the first coat obviously I'm going all the way down to the bottom of the ghostly parts. The second coat I will start about um, three quarters of the way down and then work my way up to the, um, the cloak at the top of the body and then after that obviously um, less and less of the body or the ghostly area being covered with each successive layer and what this is going to do is obviously um, it's very much like glazing um, it's going to eventually build up to a, a solid opaque layer um, at the top of the body and have this thinner um, paler colour towards the bottom. Um, if you can get it done right it should leave a nice transition um, from that, that dark opaque uh, nighthawk glim at the top to the thinner colour at the bottom. So uh, I'll get on with that. Let it dry, like I say, it does take a good 10-15 to 15 minutes between layers for this to dry uh, due to the Lumian medium. So uh, let it dry between each layer and then like I say, just uh, layer it up. Alright, so once I've got that Nighthorn Gloom built up, um, what I want to do now is bring the tips of the ghostly areas down to um, more of a white. So all I'm doing with this is I'm using a small round dry brush, this is the Army Painter dry brush, and some Corax white. And all I'm doing, as you can see, is just backwards and forwards, concentrating a little bit more on the, uh, the tip um, with a little bit more pressure and then as I work my way up the body um, moving my hand a little bit faster going a little bit lighter with the, the pressure just to try and catch a few edges and uh, pretty much blend it down from the, uh, the night walk loom to those white tips So you can see here, I've got a good amount on the brush, wearing it in. I'm just checking it on my finger, make sure that it's not too harsh. And uh, obviously making sure that, you know, it's on the bristles, but not too, not too strong a colour that's going to come off. Okay, so following on from that, I'm now taking some Abaddon Black and just thinning it down slightly and I'm going to apply this over everything else that is left on the model um, so that's all of the uh, the railings here um, obviously this looks a bit at the top as well um, his mask his, um, his cloak obviously the sword and the sword hilt um, as well as the, uh, the scabbard or scabbard whatever it's called for his uh, sword so you know the sheath for the sword um, as well as the stony parts that are on the the base there so basically at this point anything that is white is going to get a, a couple of coats of black get it nice and opaque and then we can move on to the next step okay so now that the black is all done and there's a good solid coat over the uh, the cloak. I'm taking a 50-50 mix now of uh, Dark Reaper and Abaddon Black. And again with the small dry brush, um, just soak it up a good amount and then removing it 
Um, I just want it so that I can get, it's not so quite a full dry brush, it does have a little bit more paint on than a dry brush, um, as I do want it to go across you know, those flat areas as well, as well as the raised areas, not areas, sorry. Um, and what this is going to do is give a slightly blue-gray tint to um, the top areas of the cloak, anywhere that's uh, really going to catch that light. Um, and then obviously leave that Abaddon Black in those uh, deeper recesses. So obviously I'm going to go around all of the cloak. You can see here I'm just picking off the uh, the edges and then trying to work it onto that flatter area. Um, but I'm not trying to push it down into deep recesses. I just want to make sure that about 75% of this is the uh, is painted with this mix. Okay, so I'm now mixing up some Fenrisian Grey with the Dark Reaper. Um, this is about two parts uh, grey, one part Dark Reaper. Um, the Fenrisian Grey on its own is a little bit too bright for uh, highlights on this. So I just wanted to uh, darken it down a little bit with that, that Dark Reaper. And all I'm going to do with this is use it for edge highlighting on some of those sharper creases, um, anything that's sort of towards the the upper part of the body uh, where that light is going to catch the most. So any of the hard creases and uh, the edges, obviously this is uh, for edge highlighting. Um, the scabbard for the sword, I do actually forget to do that at this point, but that will be done the same as well. Um, the only difference is it will have a edge highlight of the Dark Reaper Abaddon mix first and then a small highlight of this um, over the top. Obviously I'll go around and pick off all the edges and then we'll come back in just a bit. Okay so I'm now taking some uh, Iron Breaker and I'm just putting this over all of the um, sort of the iron parts of the uh, the miniature. So that's the chainmail armor pieces that he has um, creeping out from under his cloak. The main part of the metal fence that he's sort of uh, ghosting through. Obviously, you've got a portion at the bottom that is stone, but the fence itself is an iron fence. Um, I'll also do this on the sword up the uh, the main blade of the sword, the handle, and the cross guard. Is going to be a different color um, so obviously we just want the blade of the sword in the iron breaker and also his um, helmet the whole of his helmet um, at this stage I do his um, the hourglass around his neck the frame for that in this but I actually decide that I didn't like it in the iron breaker and so I uh, do it with the uh, the Balthazar gold that I use in the next step so if you guys are following along then obviously leave the hourglass out unless you want it um, you know in the iron breaker but I think it looks better with the Balthazar gold so again I'll go around get uh, a good couple of coats on here and uh, we'll be back in a flash okay so with the iron breaker done I'm now taking some Balthazar gold and applying this to the remaining metal areas so that's the, uh, the hilt of the sword and the cross guard the um, on the scabbard part there's a little uh, sort of metal finish um, at the bottom of it and also the bit that he's holding in his hand so um, I obviously paint them in this color as well um, the only other bit is as I said the hourglass I decided to do it with the Balthazar gold over the top of the um, the iron breaker so once again I'll get on with this and catch you guys in a bit. Okay, so now that the model is all uh, painted up uh, for the base coats, I'm now going to apply, or I'm now applying some non-oil over all of the metal areas. That's both the Balthasar Gold and the Iron Breaker that we did. Um, and obviously this is to sort of dull down and dirty down the uh, those metal areas a bit. So uh, just to recap on that, that's the chain mail here, the whole of the sword, the, uh, the both of those are gold bits that were attached to the, uh, the scabbard. Uh, so this bit here and the bit by his, uh, his hand, 
the hourglass and also the uh, metal part of the fence that he's sort of poking through. And then once this is done, I'll leave this for about 15 minutes, let it fully dry, and then uh, come back for the next step. Okay, so once the non-oil has dried, I'm now taking some Stormhost Silver, and I'm just going to edge highlight all of the, um, the silver metal areas. So obviously that's the side edges of the sword, um, these sort of raised areas on the side of his helmet, um, and a little bit on the, the face part of his helmet. Um, the edges of the fence at the bottom, the, uh, the crossbars, and also some of the chainmail, just a couple of pieces on his back. Um, obviously gently doing that to pick off the, uh, some of those links. And for those areas that um, I did with the Balthazar Gold, you can see I'm just mixing in some of that Stormhost Silver with the Balthazar Gold there. Um, it's about a 50-50 mix, um, just to lighten the Balthazar down a little bit, um, take it a little bit more towards the silver side. And I'm just using this as an edge highlight on the, uh, the Balthazar Gold areas. Um, this isn't supposed to be gold, this is more of a sort of a burnished copper or brass type look. Um, so yeah, just adding a little bit of highlight to those areas. Okay, and finally, the um, the stone um, sort of gravestone bit and the bottom of the railings underneath him. I'm just taking some Mechanicus Standard Grey and uh, lightly going over the top of all that. Um, this is obviously for the stone look. The actual base itself, I won't show you guys what I did in this video. Um, you know, I've done it in plenty of other videos and your bases are probably going to be different um, depending on, you know, what, what you're doing for your army's uh, battleground type thing. Um, but obviously these stone parts, I count them as part of the model, so I'll show you guys how I do them. So uh, once I've got a, a coat of this on, I'll go in with some uh, some of that grey and you can see I'm mixing here with the Corax white to just lighten it down a little bit, there's no point in using another colour, um, just lighten it down and then use that just as an edge highlight on all of those grey areas. I do apply it a little bit more towards the broken part of the, um, the fence there just to give that sort of whiter chalky effect of the inside of the stone and then just some edge highlighting on the outside and then same with the uh, headstone here or whatever it is um, just a little bit of edge highlighting and uh, that will be it obviously I'll finish off the base uh, I've made a start on the base here I'll just finish it off with a couple of little uh, few shades and that and then we'll come back and have a look at the finished product and there we go guys one finished night of shrouds so, uh, nice, quick, easy uh, model this week. Nothing too uh, strenuous to pick back up on the, the series with. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you have newly subscribed to the channel, then a big warm welcome to you. And thank you all for your support with the channel and, uh, you know, with my disappears for a little bit thank you for uh, hanging in there and hopefully from now onwards uh, we we'll get a good few videos out every week we'll finish up this mortal realm series and we can move on to the uh, the imperium and a few other things that i've got uh, planned for the channel so uh, once again thanks a lot for joining me guys take it easy and keep painting those minis